Hi everyone, today we've got a special repair case. This iPad is stuck in recovery mode and is also giving us the error code 4013. We can try whatever we want, but nothing we do with software tools will get it out of recovery mode. We've used 3U tools and as you can see it will stay stuck on 19% before presenting us an error code. Let's open up the iPad and get the screen off. After this we have to make sure the battery doesn't make contact so we can take the motherboard out. I'm using a plastic card to stop the battery from contacting the connector. Now we can take the motherboard out. After a quick visual inspection we can't see any damage on the motherboard. Let's get started with the repair and put the motherboard into our PCB holder. On the top left of the screen you will see the power supply values and the hot air station temperature and airflow. We'll start by removing the underfill around the CPU. The underfill is under the entire chip, so we have to be super careful when removing this chip. Also, if you use too much heat, you can damage the memory of the CPU, and this will break the CPU entirely. The CPU is built up out of two parts. The CPU is at the bottom, and on top of that is the memory. The problem with this CPU is, is that it has a pseudo soldering problem. What this means is that there is an error within the production process, and the solder joints aren't well connected. This makes the CPU unstable and can cause errors like this one to occur. Don't remove the CPU with any force. If you do, you can break the CPU or separate the memory from the CPU internally. Now I'm just applying some low melt solder to make it easier to get rid of the residue solder. I'm using some wick with rosin to get rid of the solder. After this, I'm using the heat gun and the scraper tool to get rid of the underfill still on the motherboard. Let's clean everything up with a bit of alcohol. Then I'll finish up cleaning the underfill from the motherboard. Next I'll have to remove all the underfill and residue solder from the CPU. I do this again by blending low melt solder with the high temperature solder on the chip. When applying the low melt solder I'm not touching the chip. I'm just barely hovering above the chip just to apply the solder. This way I won't damage any pads on the CPU. Then with the same scraper tool and around 270 degrees celsius I'll start removing the underfill from the chip. Again I'm not putting any pressure on the chip, I'm just barely scraping the surface. The little pads on the chip are glass capacitors and are not important and don't have to be kept. Then I'll just use some wick with rosin to get rid of any residue solder on the chip. After this I'll put the chip in the reball frame for later. Let's put it aside for now and take a closer look at the motherboard. As you can see we're missing some components here. 
The observant people might have already noticed me accidentally knocking off these two components when removing the CPU. Luckily, we have a donor board here that I can take these from. Once they are in the right spot, I use the heat gun to set the component in place. Now that these two components are set in place, let's start reballing the CPU. I'm applying soldering paste. Make sure the soldering paste is not too wet. If there is too much flux in the soldering paste, then the flux will start to boil and separate the solder. When this happens, you might have to start over with the reballing process. Now I'm heating the soldering paste to form soldering joints on the chip. Once done, I'm taking the chip out of the reball sensor to do a vinyl visual inspection. Okay, really quick before we continue. Most YouTube repair videos only show you repairs where nothing goes wrong. Well, in this repair something went wrong and I want to take a moment to show you exactly what went wrong. And of course also how we fixed this. As you can see, we have some solder on the chip where it doesn't belong. This is caused by a combination of cleaning the solder off, heat, wick and the scraping tool. What this means is that the protective coating is gone. Everything under this chip's coating is ground. When reballing the chip in this state, the reball joints will just connect to the ground on the chip and cause a short. So what can we do to fix this? I have applied some UV mask on the spots where the coating was gone. This is a very tedious task, but we'll make sure our repair can continue without error. Now let's continue where we left off. Now we can put the CPU back, apply enough flux and start heating the CPU. Give a tiny push to the side of the CPU. When it bounces back a little, this means the CPU is in place. Now let's put it back together and check if it works. And as you can see the iPad turns on normally again and all the customer's data is safe. I hope you enjoyed, if you did please leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more. That was it for today, till next time.